480 is really for enthusiasts is the highest GPU you can get today, the most powerful single GPU card you can get today. So I'm expecting it's for real gaming enthusiasts. They want to really have the fastest and best. Of course, they could be the users who likes to have it as well. You don't need to be enthusiast only, but this is the focus for these people. And then you have a 470, which is uh, focused uh, for pretty good gaming for the money you get because in the end you will get very good price performance. You will get the performance which is almost doubled in compared to our previous generation. This is for normal gamer and probably the best card you can get today for the price because you can play all the games, future games, you will have all the features you can imagine and you will pay pretty reasonable price for it. The selection itself, uh, just to put it on the simple words, will allow you to create uh, very complex models. If you not close to the model, the complexity of the model is really going down. So for example, if you have a like field full of the characters, they, you know, like you're fighting in a game, you have, for example, a lot of soldiers, and you look on them from the long distance, then you see the, you know, the normal soldiers, because you cannot see the details anyway. When you're coming the closer to them, it's automatically the other characters you don't see. They are not the tessellated, it means they don't have a higher amount of the polygons and they are the tessellation or the, the, the characters itself are tessellated only these what you see, which allows you to run really fast because in the end, if you, before, if you had like big amount of the polygons, doesn't matter if you stay like far from the uh, character or close because it's always rendered. Just now, they're rendering only things which are in your field of view, which you can really see. It means that it's decreasing the you know, the requirement for uh, performance for other models, and you can get pretty amazing models, which we weren't able to do before, because the level of the characters, like the polygons, is increased like from, for example, 20 to 30,000 to 80,000 or 100,000. The OpenCL and the CUDA, these are, uh, let's say, two languages. You can use uh, the graphic cards to do the, the computing task here. It's, if I talk about the CUDA, it's pretty simple. The CUDA means practically CUDA C, it's a C language. With the 480 and with the new Visual Studio, you can even program the, the chip itself in C++, which is the same like a CPU. So we are coming very close to the CPU. By the way, when I'm talking about the GPU, about the 480, it's not the real GPU like itself. It's not only gaming GPUs like others are doing. It's like more the close to the CPU. It's like something like CGPU, if I can say like this. Yeah. And this GPU, it's... Uh, Thanks to the CUDA, our OpenCL was able to use the very heavy computing tasks, which normally the CPU is not powerful enough, and use the incredible amount of the power you have in the, all the cores, use the, all the parallelism you have in the GPU for calculation is these things. So in the basic words, OpenCL and the CUDA are the things which allowing the GPU to calculate the things the similar like a CPU, but way faster. For the 3D vision itself, uh, you need to have, first of all, NVIDIA graphic card, you need to have a drivers, you need to have a 120 Hz monitor, and you need to have the three division kit, which means the glasses with the transmitter. If I count everything uh, and count it in the Euro, you can get like for 600 Euro, maybe slightly less completely the 3D uh, gaming or the 3D environment in your home. Yeah. Today, we have like 300 games uh, available on the market. I would recommend really like, uh, for example, the, the Metro 2033, Just Cause, Need for Speech, uh, Shift, Battlefield Bad Company too. It's a lot of the new games support this.